Hey folks, Norb here. So there's this pair of headphones that I've been eyeing for some time. They're made by a small company called No, K-N-O-W. They're called The Calm, and if you buy into their ads, they're for people looking for a pair of headphones intended with letting you escape into your own personal meditative space with great sound. Comforting, calming experiences, calming colors, all about knowledge and great sound. So I thought, I'm totally their target audience. About that. If you follow this channel, you know that I did an unboxing for these uh, some time ago, a link in the description below and above my head. I've used these for about four months. They are definitely comfortable and I feel like they swaddle my head when I'm in them. The colors are lovely. The build is decent, although they feel somewhat fragile after some use and the noise canceling is excellent for the price. Now for the price, you get a phenomenal user experience. And then there's a sound. If you're looking for crystal clear sound, you're not gonna find it here. In fact, at first, this left me so disappointed, but it's a warm sound that serves more as an escape into a comforter than into a concert hall. There's more to enjoyment than just sound, and these guys get it. Frankly, I didn't wanna take them off. So if I had to describe them in a word, comforting. Quick disclaimer, no one is sponsoring this review and I bought these myself. These normally retail for $250, but I got them during their 4th of July sale, so I saved $50, so they cost me $200. When you're shopping for these, uh, you get the option to donate to a charity or to go carbon neutral, which I did. Before I continue, shout out to Jurian Hugens who commented on my first video about the No Calm. He says, thanks so much for the review. It makes me feel much safer getting these. Jurian, my pleasure, and while I know this follow-up took longer than I expected, this one's for you, bud. I'm working to build a positive community that includes you, so comment below and I may feature your comment in a future video. Also, follow me at Norviews on Twitter. And finally, if you find this content useful, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button so that YouTube remembers that I exist and hit subscribe to see more. Let's get started with a deep dive of the No Calm. Knowing what comes with the box is just as much a question of product as it is of branding. How does the company communicate its vision to you through its packaging? I actually went through this, their branding, their marketing, what these come with, along with my initial feelings in that first reactions video. The link is in the description below. Go and find it, then come back. That said, here's what's included. The headphones, a very plush carrying pouch, some artwork, a USB-A to USB-C charging cord, a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable, very colorful paperwork, and sticky notes. I kind of want to hang this. So now let's go to the ratings. Looks, 3.5 out of 5. They come in four colors, sage, black, grape plum, and black cherry. I love their colors. These have a clean blocky look to them, a mix of curves and edges. And they're a big bulky once on, so I'm not a huge fan of wearing these in public for fashion, but I also have zero qualms with them. I went flying with them anyways because they were great for that, and we'll talk about that later. Build, four out of five. These are well built, but they feel more fragile than they actually are. The headphones have a smooth plastic on the ear cups and extenders. The ear pads themselves and the headband are covered with a soft leatherette, which is wonderful to the touch. And underneath, they use a type of memory foam which makes them supremely comfortable over time. Speaking of which, although it's not advertised on the site, the ear pads are replaceable and you can contact No if you need to get replacements. That bodes well for their longevity. They are quite flexible, although I do hear a little bit of cracking. The sliders are smooth and sturdy and I'm confident these will hold up. They feel a little fragile when I pick them up. Uh, the headband doesn't feel like it's sturdy enough to hold the weight of the ear cups, but they'll hold up during travel. Speaking of weight, these come in at 320 grams or 11.3 ounces. Comfort, five out of five. I've worn these for hours and been entirely happy, glasses on or off. I'd give them a six out of five if I could. When I first started using these, I didn't find them all that comfortable. The pads felt a little stiff and the clamping force felt a little tight. After a few days, the headphones loosened up some and the memory foam ear pads started doing their thing. The company uses something called acoustic memory foam. I don't know what the difference between that and regular memory foam is. All I know is that after a week, these became spectacularly comfortable. The ear pads are so thick that they're almost delicious, like cakey donuts. I guess yeast donuts? I don't know. I don't know my donuts. It's like they hug your ears, almost like they swaddle your head. And in fact, I often found myself making excuses to wear them. Not even play them, just wear them. I don't have to wear these right now. They're just really comfortable. Early on, 
I felt a lot of ear heat and fatigue, but that went away over the course of about a week of frequent use. There's still some ear heat in there after extended use, but it's not terrible. As a point of comparison, I used these and I compared them side by side on multiple trips with the Sony XM4. And when it came to comfort and ear heat, these won, hands down. In fact, the XM4s felt like an oven in comparison. There's a bit of an exception if you're wearing glasses. They pressed a little bit too hard at first with my glasses on and the noise canceling was compromised when that was the case. Over time, it got better, but it was a thing. Now, your mileage may vary on this and the company does advertise that they gear things toward those with glasses, so buyer beware. Size-wise, there were no issues. Even people with big heads should be able to use these. Sound, two out of five. It's warm and comforting, which is good, but that comfort comes at the cost of both detail and any sort of instrument separation. When I first heard the sound, I was like, this isn't crystal clear. This is sloppy and muddy. This is the kind of sound I'd expect out of $60 headphones, not $250 ones. Don't tell me that the sound is crystal clear when it's clearly not. There's little detail and there's no separation of any kind. It's like listening to a concert from under a thick comforter. Now that's a theme here. All that said, the sound here is comfortable provided you're not scrutinizing it. It's tweaked toward the warmer range, meaning that they're not bright and the mids and lows will come out more. Unfortunately, this leaves it as a bit of a boomy mess. While companies like No claim that most people prefer this type of tuning, I'm sorry, but I wanna see those surveys. And yet, music on the calm is relaxing to listen to, but sometimes I want to hear the details in music, especially true with acoustic pop or jazz music. For example, listening to Cassandra Wilson's rendition of Time After Time or Steely Dan's Jack of Speed, those are pieces where these completely fail. But you pick a genre like lo-fi, for example, or maybe some Ravel or Debussy or Eric Satie piano pieces, and I enjoy these just fine. But in promising crystal clear sound, their marketing department wrote a check that their sound engineers could not cash. I wasn't expecting anything magical, but at $250, I was expecting it to be better than what I got. A few technical notes on the codex. These handle the SBC, AAC, and Aptex Bluetooth codex. If you want to know why that matters, check out my video about the Bluetooth codex, uh, link in the description below and above my head. Call quality, three out of five. It was okay. Not the best, not the worst. It does the job and keeps you understandable. Noise reduction, four out of five. With these thick ear pads, these definitely blocked out noise. Their hush active noise canceling technology is decent. And while most headphones block no higher than 500 Hertz, these reduce frequencies up to the 1500 Hertz mark. That means that voices start being more muted. I tested these on a flight side by side with the XM4s and these hold their own. These aren't as good as a Sony XM4 or the Apple AirPods Max when it comes to noise canceling, but make no mistake, the NoCom hold their own very well here and I was very happy with them. Given their comfort, I recommend them for this against the XM4 because the XM4 have more ear heat. Also, I tested these in the airport, so crowd noise instead of engine noise. The active noise canceling was also excellent there. It blocked the airplanes and reduced the crowd noise, but not the announcements. There are three settings, high, low, and off, which you can activate with a button. Unfortunately, the air cabin pressure effect, especially in high, was a little noticeable, though not too bad. Additional features, five out of five. Wireless charging, on-ear detection, ambient mode, touch controls, and multi-device pairing give these a great high-impact feature set, and these are implemented well, mostly. First, let's talk about wireless charging. There are not many headphones at this price range, or at all, that offer this out of the box. Bonus there. Second, on-ear detection. The headphones automatically stop when you take them off and start again when you put them back on. At first, this feature worked so smoothly. After a few weeks of frequent use though, I started experiencing errors with this process. Mostly, these wouldn't stop playing after I take them off. Sometimes though, they wouldn't start after I put them back on. Ultimately, this didn't work well enough for me to really trust it. I don't know why it degraded over time. Third, touch controls. These were sensitive without being finicky and I like them. Fourth, there's ambient noise mode, which uses the microphone to let sounds from the outside come in so you can hear the world around you. You can turn this on by placing your palm over the right ear cup for two seconds. This is a feature I love having, though I'm not a fan of the full palm activation. The pass-through was clear enough though. I do like that you can keep music playing while that's on though. And finally, a minor mention, 
but these have multi-device pairing. So you can connect them to two devices at once and the headphones will keep up to four in memory. Here's the weird part. When I contacted their support, they said that these did not support multi-device pairing, which is odd because I used it. This worked well enough for my needs. However, the Bluetooth range didn't seem all that great. If you live in a large place or somewhere with a lot of walls, the signal might break up some. Anyway, having these make for a marvelous overall user experience, which leads to my next point, user interaction design. Five out of five. I loved almost everything about the way that these work and how they feel when you interact with them. When it comes to features, they all feel useful and none feels gimmicky. The way these communicate with you is clear and personal. Full statements on the ear pads, full sentences when you turn them on or when you connect them, and even the artwork in the box and the attractive instruction books. These also have an excellent response to the touch interface as well as intelligent button design. Notice that one button is slightly higher than the other and curved so that it's easy to tell the difference. All of this combines to make using these a comforting experience and I love this. Battery power, four out of five. Wireless charging plus USB-C gives this all of the bonuses. They give you up to 24 hours of playback in a single charge. Quick charge gives you three hours of music in five minutes, and you can also use them while the power is plugged in. And when you take them off and the music pauses, the headphones enter a battery saving mode. If left off, they will eventually just shut off. Overall value, four out of five. The features are great, but that sound really should be better, especially at $250. Adding everything up, I'll put the overall score at a four out of five, and I'll toss in half a point for good measure. I like these a lot. On the whole, these are really well thought out. With better sound, these would have gotten a nearly perfect score instead of just a very high one. Because at $250, these include features that I just don't see anywhere in this price range right now, and they're implemented very, very well. But if you're going to advertise to me crystal clear sound with your mind shine technology, and I'm literally your target audience, you need to give me clear sound as well as the comfort and features you're promising. Despite the sound, I like these a lot. Other options. Note that I've reviewed a lot of these recommendations, so links it to the reviews in the description below, as well as affiliate links for the product pages to help you when shopping. I highly recommend checking out the Sony XM3 or the Sony XM4, especially the XM4. You don't get that wireless charging or thick ear pads, but you'll get detailed sound that you can modify to your taste, as well as better noise canceling. You can also check out the Sennheiser PXC 550 Mark IIs. These have better sound, are very comfortable to use, and have a lot of the same features. For budget options, check out the Soundcore Life Q30 or Q35. Both have better battery and are packed with features and can get better sound due to their software EQ. With the Q30 being about one third the price of the NoCom, the Q30 may be a better buy. But here's the thing, none of these really hit the niche that the NoCom go for. None of them really achieve that same feeling I get when using this product. And maybe that's just all marketing, though I think it has to do more with the memory foam. Or maybe that's just really great design that doesn't feel too techy. And I like that. So should you buy these? If you want a good pair of headphones to escape into and you're not looking for audiophile grade sound, then yeah, for the price, these are totally worth it. And I would absolutely get these as a nice gift for the right person. If you're considering these for yourself, if you're looking for crystal clear sound, no. If you're looking to listen primarily or even largely to audiobooks or podcasts, maybe, but it's a little muddy. If you're looking for decent, comfortable pair of headphones with solid noise canceling, on-ear detection, touch controls, and good power management, then yes, absolutely get these. And that's the thing. What you give up in sound quality, you get back in usability features and build. These are comfortable. They have a big, fluffy, quilted carrying pouch. Just Looking at them makes me happy and they focus on the overall user experience, but it's hard to give up sound quality. Now, would I buy these? Absolutely, yes. At first I wasn't sure, but the more I use this, the more I love them. So yeah, after using these for a few months, I would totally buy these again. With that, see you next time.